Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas and Welding Supply. Uh, we're here again today um, to do a little comparison video on the Multimatic 215 and the Multimatic 200. Uh, we've had a lot of questions stem in from online, people wanting to uh, see the difference between the two, uh, some more capabilities behind these two machines, and what they're good for, or what they're good at, um, and predominantly what they're bought for use of uh, like how home hobby kind of thing instead of industrial uh, so we're going to answer all those questions today um, the first thing though that we can go start dive right into is uh, the multi-mac 215 so this came out after the 200 uh, the 200 went well and on the market they've launched this home hobby 215 uh, i thought they could cover get a bigger group of people which they have these things sell great they are reliable machines uh, very few come back for service um, so basically what these two machines do they're they're mig tig and stick so they cover all three processes um, you can run flux core through them uh, gas shielded or non gas shielded um, they do come with you can get both of them with tig kits they come standard with your stinger your ground mig whip and your regulator and hose uh, they come with a spool of wire 11 pound spool of wire both of them do come right out of the box um, so to start out with these this comparison video um, we're going to walk through the 215 and its functionality uh, all the stuff that's on it so it's got a nice door on it um, pretty sturdy the hinge is pretty sturdy same hinge they are same latch they use for the engine drives um, you can see here that Miller put in this nice weld chart for all the uh, gives you parameters settings in case you don't know this also has an auto set function but this is for the non auto set function gives you a good layout of what you can run it at um, it, it has everything on there it tells you even how to hook up your work leads when you change polarity to do between me and TIG or stick. Uh, so we flip that up, gives you the functionality of these buttons, the knobs, the controls. Um, it's pretty clear cut and dry. Uh, you know, the biggest question is everyone, how hard is it to use? Uh, I mean, you pretty much plug it in and it's ready to go and it walks you right through everything as far as settings go. So here you can see you can fit an 11 pound spool on the drum you can fit a two pound spool you just take this off unbolt this the uh, cylinder there and then that slides down comes out you put a two pound spool you got your drive roll system so what's interesting about this drive roll system that was your tension room, it is a push in and turn lock to change the um what groove you want to run on so whether you're running 023 030 035 035 flux core so it has all three drive rolls on one roller pretty unique it works pretty well haven't had anybody say they've had a problem with it um all the ones i've ran never never had a problem with them too so like i said earlier this is your tensioner push that down this gives you the tension on the wire so you can adjust that there um right here's your the knob to hold in your MIG gun, which we can show you here in a minute. I'll put that in. And then this is your polarity changeover. So this is for when you go to change your polarity on the front of your machine. You hook this into the positive side of the machine. Um, they store that inside when you're not MIG welding. So when you're stick welding, take welding, uh, just to keep it out of the way. And then just look at the front of the machine. It tells you what process you're in off to this side. So we can scroll through all of them. We'll start at the top. So you get the flux cord, no gas. So this is self-shielded. It walks you through this whole screen step of where to hook up your, and then it gives you an error. So we don't have the cable hooked up. That's why it's throwing the error code. Scroll down, stainless steel, uses a Trimix gas recommends that shows you how to hook up your polarity leads works really well it gives us another air code nothing wrong with it scroll down to the next one mild steel 7525 so and this one shows you how to hook it up also what polarity you have to be in scroll down again mild steel straight co2 so you can this 
machine has capabilities to run 100% CO2, if that's what you choose to do or if that's what you do now. Scroll down one more. MIG aluminum, 100% argon. This thing has a spool gun option. Um, does not come standard with the spool gun, but it does. You can buy it aftermarket spool gun for it. I think it's like a spool bait 100. Hooks up, welds aluminum fairly well. Um, you know, you're not gonna come out of the gate welding half inch aluminum with this machine. It's, it's not meant to do that. So after the aluminum function here, they shows you how to hook up your spool gun, runs you through that setup. Um, after that aluminum is the TIG. It shows it has a, this machine comes when you buy the TIG kit, uh, TIG torch, foot pedal, uh, and the regulator you already have. So <clears throat> it, it, you can, shows you how to hook all that up. What's interesting about this machine is that on the back side, it has two gas ports. So one is for 75-25 and one is for pure argon for TIG welding. So the reason they do that is because the TIG torch on this machine is has a through hole on the on the DINs connector to feed the gas. So it needs a direct line to the gas to feed the DINs connector on the TIG torch. Kind of unique. There's a couple other Multimatic machines out there that have that function. It works pretty good. Uh, nothing too bad about it. Scroll down one more. <clears throat> stick output. So this machine also stick welds. It comes with the electrode holder and the ground. Shows you how to set that up. And then you can run through and do what gauge metal you're welding on and what size electrode, what electrode you're running. Uh, it's a pretty, like I said earlier, clear cut. Easy to use. It gives you, tells you what exactly each button is what you need to choose um, and you can adjust amperage from there from what their auto set function is you can adjust up or down whatever you prefer um, for the total package of three in one home hobby i think it's great i mean it really is a nice machine now for heavy industrial stuff i would say no but for home hobby or fixing stuff on a farm or quick fix stuff on the road yes absolutely now we're going to jump over to the 200 i'm going to leave this up here so this machine came out after the 200. here's the 200. when they came out with this machine uh it was pretty innovative because it was a three-in-one uh the price point was high they sold quite a few because it was so unique that it was a three-in-one so basically it was a, these two machines are identical other than the case that they come in. This is like an 8VS suitcase feeder case, basically. So this is an industrial unit uh, meant for, in, in well, industrial settings, uh, factories, farms, uh, that sort of thing, where it's gonna be tossed around, thrown in the bed of a truck, thrown in a, you know, a uh, inload or something like that, where you gotta go weld a repair. It's pretty hefty. That, Hinges are nice. Same thing though. 11 pound spool is this. It's the same as this one. Has all your weld charts on the inside here. Right on the door. Very nice setup. Um, the newer ones now, they've, it's some kind of uh, industrial adhesive. Stays in there a whole lot better than what this one does. Um, same drive roller system that push in, push out, turn, lock system with the three drive rolls in one. Uh, basically the same functionality as this machine, only in a different package, like I said earlier. Uh, the interface on this machine is a little bit different. And we can plug it in and talk about that here. So something I forgot to mention about the, these two machines, same plug back in. It has this 110, 220 auto line feature. That's your, uh, your DAP, you know, your same, same back end. So you just change out this piece. Every machine comes with two of these, one for 220, one for 110. And we're running uh, 220 on today, just to get all our, our current output. So I turned this machine on and we had it set for stick. So you can see the difference in the 
front features on this machine. Same blue buttons that toggle back and up and down, changing through the process, but the process changer is actually a turn knob now. A little bit heavier duty, a little more robust. Um, and actually, you can feel it. It's hard to turn when you go to turn it. And this machine's brand new, so um, it has never been ran. I can figure over time it probably loosen up a little bit. These these two are pretty tight too. Right down here, positive, negative terminals. Um, so you can see though the shell of it is a little bit more encased for it's more protected against uh, what you guys are going to do to them out there. So. As a as when you're buying these machines, I guess the biggest thing is to what are you going to do with it? Are you going to leave it in your garage? Buy the 215. You're going to carry it in your back of your pickup truck. Buy the 200. Same machine, same output. Um, just it's encased in it, everything. This one does have a few more features on it. Uh, nothing really notable that this one won't do. Um, I've had people in out in the field that bought these and they mig weld with them predominantly and they love them so i had one gentleman he built a 10 knot 100 foot extension cord for it runs it off wall power 20 amp circuit ran it 100 feet away inside of an oven and said it welded like he was 10 feet away from the plug so he built the extension cord obviously it was it was something specific but still at 100 feet away from an out power output that's amazing on this little tiny machine. Yeah, I'm 110 too. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll get some welding with them and uh, try them out. So I'm gonna probably weld with this 215 and a lot of the questions that we get are what do they do best? So when they came out with these machines, they had, they wanted to do, they knew they wanted to do three in one because everybody wants three in one. So they MIG weld, both of them MIG weld really well. It is, the short arc on them is great. Um, it's, it's amazing. When you get to TIG welding, they do that very well. Not as good as the MIG welding, but it's, uh, the TIG welding is good. I've TIGged stainless steel and mild steel with, both, with this 200 and it performed well. And that was on 110 also, um, did not, hit the duty cycle on it and we were welding up some pretty it wasn't real it was probably quarter inch mild steel so that wasn't too bad what they don't do well and where we see a lot of complaints is uh on the stick welding portion so neither one is formulated for 6010 and they do run 6011 well 6013 well and 7018 well so we had a problem some people want to say well they don't do what they thought they were going to do so this machine 215 is rated at 532nd electrode um i it does not do that well now once again that you know it's it's not a high output machine the duty cycle on it's 20 percent um we're not talking it's not an xmt350 with 100 percent duty cycle you know heavy load heavy duty no this machine these were home hobby quick fix kind of uh, machines they were put out there to do that just that so these will not stick well the best can you get them to stick well yes absolutely they will do it will you be dissatisfied with it if you're trying to stick weld half inch plate absolutely you will not like it for that but let's get down to it we'll try weld them all right so now we've uh set the 215 up on uh, for stick welding and I have 3 16th material here and I'm gonna run 332nd 7018 now these are all the preset settings and they have it at 100 amps middle of the road um, we're just gonna try these out and see how it performs um, I'm running a I would say better electrode um, it's probably not top of the line but it's not definitely not rock bottom either so it is a good running electrode so let's let's try this out here and see how how the arc start is and how everything kind of performs well so.
So I ran that electrode right down to the numbers just to see if it would cut out. It, uh, it didn't. It went right through there. So I'm Pretty nice looking beat for uh, at 100 amps on 332. Uh, the one thing that if you did notice that the arc start uh, had a little trouble. I, I don't know. We'll try another one. Now I know these machines do not have a program hot start function, so it's going to be they are going to have a little bit harder time actually starting that electrode. Um, let me let's just burn another one and see if that is the case. Didn't stop, no problems. Check that off. Pretty decent looking bead. Now, again, the plate has been warmed up from the first bead. Um, wetted out a little better on this electro than that ran. Um, no problems. I mean, it, the arc start, if you saw that too, fired right up. So, you know, I, I've heard complaints on arc start not having an issue, electrodes cutting out. Um, but you can see right there, it. it it did it, and it did it well. Um, I mean, that's impressive for that little of a machine compared to like an XMT350 or a uh, you know, 450, one of the two. So let's try, I got some 6011 here, uh, eighth inch. Let's try running that electrode, see how that runs. So I'm gonna go back over here and change my Change it to 8 inch, 6011, 316. Says 90 amps. Let's try. This is just another preset setting. Um, I'm not even messing with getting off their auto set. Let's just see how it works out. We'll go from there. Machine didn't quit. I, I mean, it didn't cut out. Chips and slag. Uh, definitely a different running electrode than 7018 though, 6011. It is a uh, uh, how do you say more abrasive electrode? Maybe it's, it's more aggressive, um, a lot more spatter, and uh, not as smooth running as 7018. Um, these electrodes, there's something we just had laying around, so it could have been a little bit older, a little different arc characteristic. Now let's do. The next one here, and I got the original brick rod, 6010. Uh, they say it won't run it. Let's see if it will. I, I think it'll, it'll at least give it a shot. So to adjust for the 6010, we're going to just bring it down. The, it's a 332nd rod. We're going to peg it to 6011, 332nd. Uh, 90 amps again, 316 material. Uh, once again, all auto set function. I, I'm not adjusting that. Let's see how that rod starts. Uh, remember, this machine is not formulated for 6010. Um, it's just something to do with the flux coating and the arc characteristics of 6010. This one is not good for it, but I believe it'll weld, so let's try it. We were watching closely the arc kept cutting out but notice close up on that end of that see how that fingernails like that just ever so slightly it, it's like a the, see how I have to chip that off and the it actually recesses back the metal does that's what they're talking about so that's why I had to hold a really tight arc to keep that running uh, as soon as I long arced it stopped cut right out you saw that, that I think that's what a lot of people complain about is that when they're going it just stop, cuts right out well on all these electrodes, I've kept a really tight arc, and uh, they've all ran pretty good, except for that one. But once again, it's not formulated to run it. Uh, it's not made to run it. 
but as you saw, we ran it. You just got a hold a tight arc, and it actually ran pretty good when it when it was going. So, so now we got the uh, Multimatic 200 hooked up. So this was the first one three and one Miller came out with. Um, I got it hooked up for stick welding. Got to set the stick. We're gonna run it at 100 amps. Um, no auto set on the stick function. Got our leads run. Let's uh, give this a shot. We'll run some 332nd 78 team. ran well on with this machine um, no problem with the arc start uh, fired right up uh, I ran pretty smooth too pretty crisp arc uh, kind of interesting I mean in comparison to the 215 a little bit more crisp than what the 215 did chip it off there. yeah even the bead looks pretty good um, as far as uh, the material and everything so let's uh, let's try running uh, some 6011 with this machine. We're just gonna do just exact same uh, as we did with the 215. We'll try 6011. Now remember this is eighth inch, so we're gonna run it at I don't know probably somewhere in there about 90 amps I think is what the 215 was at. Uh, let's give this a shot and see how it starts up. Ran pretty decent, I would say in comparison to 215. Same arc characteristics, same everything, nothing too different. Now if you notice though, about halfway through that weld, that fan kicked out. And if you notice on the 215, that fan was on the minute we struck an arc with 718. So that's just something I noticed that was different. Um, I don't know if it's a big deal, I don't know if it's gonna change the outcome of any weld, but um, just interesting that this fan waited on before the uh, 215. So let's try the rod that they said can't be run on these machines, which is 60 pen again. Um, I think we're going to have the same result. I think we're going to be able to do it. So once again, 332nd, 60 pen. So, a little bit of uh, trouble keeping that arc uh, stabilized in the puddle, kept cutting out. Um, but like I said before, the tighter the arc, the better it ran. So towards the end there, I changed my angle a little bit and it started to run a lot more consistent. Um, but once again, they say it does not run this well. And as you can see, we just ran it. So it's not that I can't do it, it's just not recommended to do it. Um, all in all that, this machine, I, in my opinion, has a little bit better art characteristic than the 215, but the 215 has a few more upgrades to it that are probably more user-friendly, um, easier to use, and just more clear-cut than what this machine is. Thanks again for watching my video on the comparison between the 200 and the 215. I think I covered most of the bases about uh, pros and cons of each and questions you may have. Uh, or did have about them. Uh, check out bakersgas.com for all the deals that we have going on on these machines. And there's some promos, there's some Yeti cups that they give away, free shipping available. Um, just to give you a price point on some of these machines, the Multimac 215 without a TIG kit is right around 1400 bucks. With a TIG kit is 1800. And this machine comes with a TIG kit already, 2400 bucks, right around there. Um, so go to bakersdask.com and uh, check these machines out. Thanks again for watching.